Hi. Over the next few minutes, we will show you how to install, maintain, and operate your new Bestway FlowClear chlorinator. Please keep in mind this video is to accompany the printed user's manual and is not a substitute. Pay careful attention to the warnings and safety instructions included in the manual. Before installation, your pool should be set up and filled with water. Also check that a power outlet is accessible. First, let's have a look at the chlorinator. This is the electrolytic cell. It contains the bipolar titanium electrodes that perform electrolysis and creates chlorine. This is the flow sensor. It protects the electrolytic cell and assures there is always adequate water flowing through the cell. When the water flow drops below the minimum flow rate, the sensor will automatically shut down and no chlorine will be produced. This is the control panel. It regulates chlorine production, operating hours, and measures the parameters of salt level and water flow. If any deviations from the defined settings occur, the control panel will display a warning. The following information is for 800 gallon filters. Begin by turning off the filter. To extend the life of the chlorinator and maintain optimum performance, it should be installed as the last piece of equipment in the return line to the pool. Water flows from outlet valve B into the filter, then the chlorinator and back to the pool's inlet valve A. Using the stopper plugs, prevent water flowing from the pool. Loosen the hose clamps. Remove the debris screens and insert the stopper plugs into both the pool's inlet and outlet valves. Locate adapters E and F. Attach adapter F to the chlorinator's outlet valve. Remove the hose from the filter's outlet valve and attach it to the chlorinator's output valve. This is the hose running from the pool's A inlet valve. Connect adapter E first to the provided hose and then to the filter's output valve. Attach the opposite end of the hose to the chlorinator's input valve. With the installation complete, you can remove the stopper plugs and allow water to flow from the pool. Replace the debris screens and tighten the hose clamps. Also bleed the air purge valve on the filter pump to remove any air from the system. This step is very important. No air should be in the system during operation. The following information is for 1,500 gallon filters. To extend the life of the chlorinator and maintain optimum performance, it should be installed as the last piece of equipment in the return line to the pool. Water flows from outlet valve B into the filter, then the chlorinator and back to the pool's inlet valve A. Begin by turning off the filter pump. Prevent water from escaping the pool by closing the connection valves. Remove the hose from the filter's outlet valve and attach it to the chlorinator's output valve. This is the hose running from the pool's A inlet valve. Attach the provided hose to the chlorinator's input valve and the filter's output valve. With the installation complete, water can now flow to both the filter and the chlorinator. Open the connection valves on the pool. Lead the air purge valve on the filter to remove any air from the system. This step is very important. No air should be in the system during operation. The following information is for 800 gallon sand filters. 
To extend the life of the chlorinator and maintain optimum performance, it should be installed as the last piece of equipment in the return line to the pool. Water flows from outlet valve B into the filter, then the chlorinator and back to the pool's inlet valve A. Begin by turning off the filter. Using the stopper plugs, prevent water flowing from the pool. Loosen the hose clamps. Remove the debris screens and insert the stopper plugs into both the pool's inlet and outlet valves. Remove the hose from the filter's outlet valve and attach it to the chlorinator's output valve. This is the hose running from the pool's A inlet valve. Connect the provided hose to the filter's outlet valve and the chlorinator's inlet valve. With the installation complete, you can remove the stopper plugs and allow water to flow from the pool. Be sure to tighten the hose clamps. The following information is for 1,500 gallon sand filters. To extend the life of the chlorinator and maintain optimum performance, it should be installed as the last piece of equipment in the return line to the pool. Water flows from outlet valve B into the filter, then the chlorinator and back to the pool's inlet valve A. Begin by turning off the filter. Prevent water from escaping the pool by closing the connection valves. Locate adapters D and C. Attach adapter D to the chlorinator's outlet valve. Remove the hose from the filter pump's outlet valve and attach it to the chlorinator's output valve. This is the hose running from the pool's A inlet valve. Attach adapter C to the pump's outlet valve and the provided hose to the adapter. Attach the opposite end of the hose to the chlorinator's input valve. With the installation complete, Water can now flow to both the filter and the chlorinator. Open the connection valves on the pool. You now need to add salt to the pool and let it thoroughly dissolve. This will take 24 hours and you should keep the chlorinator off during this time. To determine the amount of salt you'll require, refer to the table in the chlorinator manual. The ideal salt level is between 4,000 to 5,000 parts per million. Slowly and evenly pour the salt into the pool away from the inlet and outlet valves to avoid clogging the filter. You should stir the salt on the pool floor to speed up the dissolving process. Do not allow salt to accumulate on the pool floor. Run the filter pump for 24 hours to dissolve the salt completely. After 24 hours, unplug the filter pump. Plug in the chlorinator and turn it on to check the water flow status and salt levels. If too much salt has been added, the salt level light will notify you by flashing red. If this is the case, you need to lower the salt concentration by partially draining the pool and refilling it with fresh water. Drain and refill approximately 20% of the pool's water or until the salt level light changes to good. If the water flow status is normal and the light is red, turn off the chlorinator and plug in the filter. Turn on the chlorinator again. The LED light above the on-off button turns green. 
press and hold down the input buttons together for three seconds until you hear a long beep to unlock the keypad. Determine the operating time according to table 2 or table 5 in the chlorinator manual and set the operating time. To lock the keypad, press and hold down the input buttons until you hear a long beep. The chlorinator will now operate for the time you set at the same time each day. The operating time can be reset if necessary following the steps previously outlined. If you unplug the power or an outage occurs, the chlorinator operating time must be reset. While the chlorinator is operating, the time indicator lights will display the remaining hours of operation in the current cycle. When the cycle ends, the light above the on-off button displays yellow, indicating the unit is in power saving mode. The chlorinator will resume operation 24 hours after it enters the power saving mode. Press any button to view the current status of the control panel. Please note, the pump must be turned on for the unit to produce chlorine. Warning! Do not operate the chlorinator while the pool is in use. Routinely check pool water chemistry. Using the provided test strips, you can check free chlorine, pH and total alkalinity levels. Never use the pool if the chlorine level is greater than 3 parts per million. Maintenance. Ensure both the filter pump and the chlorinator are off. Use the connection valves or stopper plugs to prevent water from escaping the pool. To clean the flow sensor, unscrew the locking nut of the flow sensor and disconnect the signal line. If deposits are found on the surface of the flow sensor, use a garden hose to clean it thoroughly. If the deposits cannot be easily removed, use a towel to clean the flow sensor. Warning: Do not use a metal brush as this can cause permanent damage. After the flow sensor has been cleaned, replace it into the housing. Screw it into position and replace the signal line. To extend the life and performance of the electrolytic cell, it is recommended you inspect the cell every three months and clean it if necessary. In most cases, the self-clearing function of the electrolytic cell will keep the cell working at optimum efficiency. But if pool water has a high mineral content, the cell may need manual cleaning. Disconnect the hoses and adapter from the electrolytic cell. Inspect the electrolytic cell for any dirt on the titanium plates. If there is nothing, reinstall the adapter and connect the hoses. If there is dirt, use a garden hose to clean it off. Only flush from the direction of the water inlet to avoid damaging the flow sensor. Do not use any metal tools as this will scratch the coating on the plates. Note. A buildup on the cell indicates that there are unusually high levels of calcium in the pool. If this is not corrected, you will have to frequently check and clean the cell. If flushing does not remove the dirt from the plates, disconnect the cell from the base by removing the flow sensor, unplugging the electrolytic line and unscrewing the mounting screws. Soak the cell in a vinegar solution for 2-3 to three hours and again flush it with your garden hose. With the electrolytic cell cleaned, reinstall it on the chlorinator. In areas with freezing winter temperatures, pool equipment must be winterized to protect against damage. Disconnect the hoses and air dry the chlorinator before storage. It is recommended to visually inspect and clean the electrolytic cell at this time. Simply store in a warm, dry place. If you have any questions about our products, 
please visit our website at www.bestway-service.com or call our toll-free number for your region. Thanks for watching.